Um, so, um, hi, I'm Matt. I'm um, the CEO and CTO, also part-time accountant of Dev Graphics Programming, which is a small consultancy of uh, seven uh, programmers. Um, so, um, what is a material graph? Um, you might know them from your visual, favorite visual scripting editor when working with materials. Uh, here we have uh, PBRT and Mitsuba. Well, this is Mitsuba documentation. They're very similar. And we obviously took the liberty to uh, take some uh, diagrams from this documenta the documentation. So um, whereas something like Unreal Engine lets you construct shaders that don't make sense physically, that is, they're kind of hard to import and sample and so on, material definition language or material X constrain you to compose your materials out of basic uh, physically based rendering uh, uh, BRDFs or BSDFs, which for this, for whom this um, important sampling needs to be possible. Now, um, we had a particular problem with our client, which is we wanted to implement path tracing with GL cell compute shaders before the whole NVX ray tracing thing came about. And we wanted to replace a Mitsuba 0.5 render farm with uh, 56 individual CPUs plus the farm, uh, render farm with a single GPU and uh, preferably make it run in the cloud so it can be scaled up and down as needed. And we wanted to raise the default rendering resolution from 1080p to 4K. Um, and with materials that need to be um, you know, defined as uh, these BXDF material graphs. Uh, in this case, this would be Mitsuba XML because that's what they were using, but obviously they wouldn't be using that forever. So uh, we're also looking at NVIDIA MDL. And we, we obviously needed to evaluate an important sample from this BXDF material graph presentation um, because we simply just couldn't, um, like for example, best fit this to, let's say a Disney principled PBR Uber shader. Uh, because we wanted to be smooth in our transition from one system to another, um, such that you could still run Mitsuba side by side for a little bit of time with the same scene, so you could kind of compare and iron out, iron out any of the kinks. So, did we solve this? Yes, we did. Uh, so, this is our hybrid rendering path tracer we shipped to our ArchVis client with three GPU APIs interoperating with each other. So we have OpenGL for rasterization of the visibility buffer uh, and compute, OpenGL compute, for shading and ray generation, while also making it interrupt with OpenCL uh, because we use Radian Rays 2.0 to uh, traverse our BDH. And then we also threw in CUDA for optics AI denoising. And all of those APIs are sharing buffers with each other, and it's all a great party. Um, so uh, here I had to remove some uh, logos uh, with AI because you know, like, I didn't want to go through the whole process of signing off the client of my client wherever I could show the render. Um, so it's built on top of our GPU framework, Nabla, and it's available for, binary, uh, for download and binary form from our GitHub repository. Um, and we're part currently porting it to Vulkan ray tracing only, uh, and a little bit of CUDA for that optics AI denoising. So this is what that XML actually looks like. And this is a very small sample scene labeled with its Mixuba XML material definitions. So what was our solution? Well, we follow the similar model to LLVM. So multiple front ends, single intermediate representation, and some back ends to sprinkle in. Um, now, the context here is that the, uh, this material compiler is obviously a domain specific compiler. So it's uh, uh, built for efficient evaluation and important sampling of all the BXDF graphs in the scene, not only one material. Uh, and specifically for the context of path tracing. So if you are using a load discrepancy se sequence, uh, that's going to throw your samples as far as it can across the domain, especially if you want progressive rendering. So um, what's that going to do is it's going to really seriously mess up your convergence across your uh, uh, subgroup. And uh, well, the backends actually, they implement, except for the Uber kernel backend, which we all know from mega kernels considered harmful paper. Basically what Unreal Engine does is wrong for this. Um, that's enough. So the backends implement a just-in-time compiled and optimized virtual machine with a custom virtual instruction set and a register file. So our custom intermediate representation is a superset of all the front ends. And with kind of the general architecture, 
So what we have is obviously the Mitsuba XML, and we don't have the other ones because nobody wanted to pay us for that yet. Um, so uh, when we did the design IR, we were looking at NVIDIA MDL at the same time to kind of make sure that we don't kind of code, the code our server into a corner. And for uh, Material X, uh, we will be looking to support that because GLTF has kind of integrated that as an extension. Uh, so far, no idea how we'd have to modify the IR to kind of make that work. Um, and we are bindless agnostic. So the uh, texture sampling is separate per backend. You can kind of, you know, that's the backend's responsibility to handle how you're going to get textures. The IR just references image assets. And that's going to make more sense on my kind of third presentation uh, uh, with regards to how our framework is kind of structured. Um, so the it's lossless as an expressive. So what we have is the, that the IR, it canonicalizes the form of mathematically identical BSDFs. So basically, the, they have the same shapes. So you can kind of hash cons, duplicate, eliminate, and so on. Um, so, yeah, so we basically have this virtual machine, and it's handwritten. And it's reading like this make-believe instruction stream from an SSBO. And then it uses a local array, which can be like local variables or shared memory, whatever you want, uh, which you have to dynamically size depending on how complex the materials in your scene are, to make sure you're not sac sacrificing occupancy with register pressure. Um, and obviously, we could try and our hand at ray tracing pipeline, but the problem with callables is that they don't really kind of support recursion that well, so you still kind of need this register file to kind of keep track of stuff while you're kind of evaluating the street. Uh, so this is what it looks like, some code snippets. Uh, so uh, what's important to note that this canonical IR it does not define an abstract syntax tree because it's not a single expression. It's an abstract syntax forest. You have multiple root nodes. Um, and the actual uh, virtual machine production code is not as clean as that because we don't actually have a one-to-one -one mapping between an opcode and a switch case because sometimes some of them are, are kind of merged together to ensure better convergence. Um, so again, this is the current backend. So we have virtual instruction sets single GLS of function, although not quite because it's for different instruction streams, but you know, different things. Uh, so uh, all of the instructions are basically u vectors. Uh, I'll show an example coding later. And um, most of the BXDF parameters are stored in a separate SSBO uh, to kind of keep the instruction stream compact. And there's four different types of instruction sets and instruction streams, and that kind of is quite, quite important. So. Um, uh, some of the BXDFs, they want parameters such as roughness or albedo from a constant or from a texture. And now the problem with texture fetching, it's a couple hundred cycles. So if you've got some of them doing from a constant and some of them doing from a texture, you don't want that. And two, we can fetch all of the parameters in parallel. So that's why we have a separate instruction stream. So you could potentially spread that out across the entire work group if you are doing this in compute. Uh, ahead of time. And also, the thing is like important sampling. If you're doing miss, RIS, RISTER, whatever, you uh, need to uh, evaluate the BRD, B, BXDF multiple times and important sample at least once. So that makes all of the kind of constants from textures already preloaded in this array. Um, and we obviously have virtual texturing because we were in OpenGL and we didn't really like the bind list that OpenGL had. Uh, and you can copy paste this into any stage, you know, fragment, compute, ray tracing, pipeline, whatever you want. Uh, yeah, so we virtual texturing from RenderDoc. Uh, so ours is a complete solution, unlike you know some of the talks you might find, for example, on terrain virtual uh, virtual texturing. Uh, we handle uh, you know the MIP uh, tails uh, and isotropic filtering and so on. Um, and we also have a, a arbitrary opt value extraction. So. We still kind of evaluate the material graph, but we kind of have this weird AOV transport integral, which is kind of like as if the AOVs were lights. Uh, and that makes the normal of the geometry that you see for, for, through some smooth glass actually appear there. And it does wonders for the optics AI they know is that. Um, and this is kind of our whole motivation, right? So if you don't have independent program counters, which is before NVIDIA Volta, uh, at least on NVIDIA. Well, there's no hope of executing any part of this, you know, concurrently. And even now, if you have program counters, it kind of not exactly clear on the details whether the program counter needs to be at the same address or whether it needs to be on the same instruction. Well, I've kind of 
forgot to ask Nvidia. So, but but it still should give you a, a boost in in to keep this convergent. Uh, this is a example instruction coding. Um, and uh, this is how we used to do uh, important sampling. We kind of had a really bad assumption that every part of this subtree is going to pass the white furnace test, which is obviously not true for stuff that's supposed to absorb energy. Um, this was kind of cool because we didn't need actually any registers because you always went either left or right. Uh, but now we have to replace that with uh, uh, reservoir sampling. Uh, and we are obviously making a second version of this. Um, so the GitHub issue with the full spec uh, link in the uh, speaker notes. Um, and I guess that's this. Oh, um, I'd like to thank uh, Sanho Kim, who is working at our company, uh, because we really put this together last minute <laughs> over the weekend. Uh, and uh, it was thanks to him that I didn't have to stay up all night and kind of put this all out together. And uh, shout out to Krzysztof Schenk, who was the co-author of the uh, first version of this. Um, right, I believe I went over time. Uh, uh, if you want to know about this, catch me at the coffee break. 